I've got this 365 GT2 plus 2 at the shop and it's valve adjustment time. Uh, you may have seen this car before because I managed to just uh, go down and did a house call for the owner um, and uh, just basically did a uh, oil change and fluid change at his house. I mean, a ship, he's, he's uh, down in New Jersey, so it's a couple hours away, maybe even close to three hours away. So um, it, if I can try to save him some money because shipping, you know, taking a car by the mile by the mile and uh, shipping it here can get pretty expensive. So sometimes, uh, you know, it's cheaper for him to just pay me the hours it takes for me to drive down personally, do the work, and then um, and uh, come back than it is for him to add the shipping to it. But there are certain jobs that just need to be done here at my shop, and uh, one of them is the uh, is the valve adjustment. So it's been a while since we've done a valve adjustment, and um, the, the owner's manual says you got to do it every 6,000 miles, which, you know, you should follow the owner's manual. But um, 6,000 miles sounds like very few miles for one of these cars. But when you think about it, most people, you know, I hate to say it, my, the average miles my customers do is, is, uh, is 1,000 miles a year. So it could be a good six years before you, it's time for a valve adjustment. But anyway, on this car it was due. We knew it was. And... Um, he said, well, this year I'm going to send it to you and, and let's go ahead and do the valve adjustment. So I already have the car stripped apart, took a bunch of pictures of it because on a 365, there's a lot going on. I mean, you have to move the, uh, you have to, there's a, this one has power steering. So the power steering pump bracket has to come off. Um, a lot of the emission stuff has to come off. Uh, they're all attached to the valve covers. So in order to get to the valve covers, it's a little bit more uh, involved than let's say a 250 or a 330 because they didn't have any of those, um, any of those pieces and parts. This car also has an air pump. And um, so, like I said, I took a bunch of pictures and uh, took notes so I remember how it all went back together and um, and have it stripped down, took the valve covers off. So, although it's already been performed, um, I wanted to just show you a little bit of, of, of what I do. Um, I have a remote starter. So what I have it d done is hooked up to the, kind of runs the cable down into the fuse panel um, I can access the starter from the fuse panel. And um, what I do is I could just bump the, you know, I could just turn on, here, let's turn on the battery. And um, I can just bump the bump the starter. And with the with the spark plugs out, there's very little resistance on the on the engine. So I can I can um, click it away. And what I do know, just simply because I know that this, let's say this is the one six bank that um, about this. I don't know how you would describe it. If you look at it um, from the from the front of the engine at about uh, seven o'clock is usually top dead center of number one cylinder, which would be over here. And so um, I'm watching it and as I pump it, I can actually move the rotor pretty close to to that. Um, and then what that basically does is the first the first two rockers are, are in top dead center. That means both valves are closed. and um, I take my valve, my uh, my um, feeler gauges, and do do a valve adjustment and check the uh, check the uh, the lash. On 365s, I think it's 2025. So um, it's uh, in other words, it's it's 20, it's 0.25 millimeters is the exhaust. So what I'm doing is I'm just checking the exhaust and uh, and check for clearance there, and then also check the intake, which is 20. So let's see if I can find my 20 with one hand. So my 20 is here and I just check that. Now, like I said, I've already done it. So everything's already checked out. And, um, and I think I've shown you before on a valve adjustment, <clears throat> what I do here is um, a real quick trick is because these are, this is a six cylinder engine. Um, when I'm bumping the starter, I'm not necessarily looking at the rotor. I'm looking at the, the, the valves because what will happen is, as I bump the starter, you'll see these rockers go up and down. Now, I know for a fact that when the, you always do opposite, so when these valves in the back that I'm looking at, the back of the engine, it's always the piston is on the other side of the engine is, is, in, is in the same position. However, one side is on exhaust stroke and the other one is on, on um, compression stroke. So you can basically tell what 
piston is at top dead center with both valves closed, and in other words, that's the compression stroke. If the other side is also in, in, in other words, if the two valves on the other side are open, that means the opposite cylinder is is closed. So watch. If I'm watching this 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 rear cylinder, and you see the intake is open, keep it open, and all of a sudden the intake start and close, and now they're both closed. So now we have exhaust is starting to open. See that? So now I may have passed it. I may have passed it a little bit. So let me go back again. So exhaust is open. There. So now exhaust is open and intake is open. That's the overlap. That's the overlap of all the exhaust gases are going out of the exhaust valve and it's just about to close and the intake is just about to open. What that means is the piston is, is, is just about to come to top dead center. That means the other side, the piston is in the same position, but listen, both valves are closed. So that's when I check the other side and I check that, that lash on the opposite cylinder. And that kind of plays for the six cylinder engine because when this one, you know, it's funny when I, when I think about this, I never can stop remembering with the way Francois taught me. This is when it's in balance. So in other words, Imbalance meaning that when these two valves are under tension and there's no lash, in other words, I turn the engine over and this one starts to get into that balance where the exhaust is just is still is still closing, but it hasn't closed all the way. And then the intake starts to open. That overlap means that this cylinder is about to go in a top dead center on compression stroke. That's when I check the valve lash. I don't know if that makes any sense. It makes sense to me. If you've been doing this long enough, you, you probably get, you know you know know that trick. But anyway, so I did the valve adjustment, and um, you know that entails checking every single one of these adjuster screws. You take them out, you check them, and what they look like is they look like this. These are the adjuster screws. They are held in with a capture nut or a, a you know a lock nut. But what happens is every once in a while you're going to get one with a little bit of pitting. This is the sacrificial piece. So what happens is um, that is touching the top of the valve stem and pushing down. As these rockers move it down, it's pushing against it. The, the valve stem itself has a certain amount of hardness, and the way it's designed is that this is slightly softer than the, than the, valve, than the top of the valve. The valves are hardened, or supposedly hardened, and then this is also hardened but this one is supposed to be slightly softer. Um, when you're building one of these engines, you need to know the, you know, your suppliers and, and what's harder and what's softer, but the, the whole idea and the concept of that is that this is supposed to be slightly softer. So what ends up happening is this rides up and down and it, and it rocks up and down on the end of the rocker. It's pushing and opening the valves thousands and thousands of times. And um, eventually it starts to wear. It should not damage the top of the valve stem. It, this is supposed to eventually wear out, and that's why they, they're replaceable. The valve is not replaceable or as easily replaced because you have to pull the heads off, you have to take all the valves out. If those were the things that wore, if the top of the valve stem wore all the time, um, you know, you'd be rebuilding the engine every 6,000 or 10,000 miles or however long these adjusters last. So doing a valve adjustment Everything kind of valve adjustments happen because as things wear, the valve seats wear a little bit, the uh, the adjuster screw wears a little bit, all that contact point wears a little bit, and that's why you're always checking the valve lash, is because that clearance is what is supposed to be when it's cold, because when everything warms up, it's good and tight, and everything is there's there's very little clearance between the valve stem. And, and the valve adjuster. But as things wear, that little bit of space starts to open up. And then as you can imagine, like tapping and tapping, and that's why you hear the clicking, is as it goes out of adjustment, you hear clicking because the, the this clearances are getting wider and wider. You need to come in, you adjust them. And sometimes when the, when the, when the screw starts to wear, um, you have to replace the whole screw. And what I found on this particular car was I just found three, bro three not broken screws, but three screws that were showing signs of wear. Um, some people will do an adjustment and they'll just replace all of them. You know, there's 24 adjuster screws and they just go ahead and replace them all. 
it, it's a matter of opinion. I mean, you know, when I don't see any wear that's going on, I usually just re replace the ones that are broken. The main reason or the logic behind that is because um, it hasn't it hasn't broken yet, and and it's working fine, and the hardness is right. I mean, sometimes with replacement parts, you know, who's selling them? You have to be have a close relationship with your supplier. If the hardness changed for any given reason, um, you could be putting a, a, a an adjuster that's made by a new manufacturer that's just slightly harder, and all of a sudden you've got the damage going back to the stems. Um, when I look at an engine and it's working fine and it's not chipped and and if you look I mean I don't know if you can even see it on this but the the chipping is so subtle it's just these tiny little pits on the on the hardened tip of it um, if I don't see them on the other ones wh why am I going to change it? it it's working fine and again if you're doing normal valve adjustments at 6,000 miles um, 6,000 miles is not going to beat these to, to death and in fact here's the other theory if this is the sacrificial piece and it's designed to wear in 6,000 miles, if one is starting out perfect and I run 6,000 miles on it, this is still going to be the piece that wears away. It's going to chip little pieces off of it and it's not going to completely shatter and disappear. It's working fine. So I think there's enough margin of error that within 6,000 miles, I would I would be chasing the other ones that, that eventually wear and maybe they won't wear. So. Um, and like I said, it's a matter of opinion. I, I have some people that if they do a valve change, they're going to replace all of them. Uh, and, and I've done that on cars that I just felt that there were too many of them that were chipping out. And if it, let's say like more than half of them were chipping out, okay, well, we're definitely at the end of the surface life of these uh, adjusters. So I'll just replace all of them. But, you know, when I have three that are going bad and the other ones look really good, um, I don't know. I, I, I feel, you know, that, that I have a pretty good feeling about the the adjusters and there's no reason to go go replacing parts and also taking not a chance because my supplier I know what they supply but it can always change things change so I'm not I feel more confident about using something that I take apart looks good and um, and I can put back together so that's basically what I'm doing here is is the uh, is the valve adjustment the other thing we had to address was the motor mounts so those those will will get done and then uh the next the rest of it is just going to be cosmetic we're doing the uh i'm doing the valve covers now's the time to do the valve covers and and get them wrinkle painted and and uh and done so so i've had them stripped and um i'm getting a a, a heat lamp it turns out that my uh, my oven is too uh, too small to handle 365 i've been able to wrinkle paint three three thirties two fifty valve covers but i guess the three sixty five <laughs> Uh, valve cover is just a little too long, so I'm gonna have to change my technique and and uh, get a, a a much larger infrared heat lamp, and uh, and do that. But I'm waiting for that to come in, and uh, and that that'll that's the next step. But uh, we're just moving forward, and uh, soon this car will will be back together. But it's uh, one step at a time. Work continues on this um, 365. I adjusted the valves, but uh, we saw that the uh, motor mounts were were bad so I replaced those but what a bear of a job I mean I knew they were hard getting into it but man I tell you I have half of it done I mean getting the motor mount out um, you have to kind of lift the engine off the motor mount and uh, getting it up and out you had to get the engine pretty high and uh, I tried jacking up the engine uh, without disconnecting too much but realized that the radiator flange here you know the radiator is attached to the engine or at attached to the car and the engine is going up in the air so this hose and the bottom hose there it was starting to stress it too much so had to drain the radiator and um, disconnect these hoses so I can get the the engine up higher and then what stopped me was the clearance on the on the air conditioner compressor air conditioner compressor comes up really close kind of tucks underneath the uh, radiator so that was way up i mean if you look at the space here i don't know if you can see it but the space between the the edge of the compressor and the and the bottom of the radiator touched so uh you know i had it up that much the, what is that about two and a half inches and uh just tall enough to get the um to get the uh the motor mount in place the old one came out no problem because it was all compressed and distorted and cracked and all that other good stuff but the new one trying to get that one because it wasn't compressed and taller that that was the the little bit of the bear and obviously i had to also disconnect the headers 
because the headers would hit up against the bottom of the, you know, if you look at the way the headers exit down here, it was gonna hit the uh, the bottom of the, the floor pan of the car if you kept jacking the car up with the headers attached. So I had to pull the headers out. And on top of that, it just seems, it's funny, it's like one step after another. So I pulled the, um, the headers out and um, the studs were coming out. The, these are normally on Ferraris, they're brass, um, brass or bonds nuts and uh, they do that so that they don't they don't seize up against the uh, the studs because uh, you know there are different metals and it and it shouldn't rust and and uh, and and uh, get seized but these managed to seize because it's been so many years that these have been here that the rust on the on the tip of the stud is uh, was holding these these in so as I was I was wrenching them off which has very limited clearance um pull the whole stud out so most of them on this side i think all but three studs stayed in place and uh they all came out like this so when i was putting them back in you you had to be really careful because usually what happens is these headers will locate themselves on their studs but if if uh, like for instance this back one um, there were no studs, all the studs came out. So the, the header was floating around and you're trying to get the stud in. And if you don't get it right, you're gonna cross thread it because you, the head is made out of aluminum. So what I ended up doing was, um, you know, easy thing, oh, we'll just put, I'll just put them back in with the studs and, and it'll just go in almost like a bolt. But you were gonna cross thread the head. So what I had to do was torch the, um, torch the studs, get them super hot, and then uh, try to, get the, uh, the the bronze or brass nut off and I managed to get a couple of them off clean them up re rechase the threads put them into the head so that way I had some kind of locating um, stud for the um, header so once I got the header aligned then I could put the other ones in as the as stuck without trying to un, un, uh, unseize every single stud and it just would have added more and more time still took hours i mean this is you know yesterday just doing this one side I, I was at this thing for a good five or six hours because each each stud each piece each gasket all this stuff is just one step at a time and and you know as you're doing it you're just you're just saying to yourself man you just don't understand how like just a simple little a simple little uh motor mount was going to take this much time but that's what what's happened and and so today I've got to do the other side. I, by the end of the day, last night I was I was beat. My hands were were pretty sore from squeezing in there. And you know, as you can see, the uh, the 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 studs are there's limited clearance, so the wrench doesn't even get a full swing. So on top of that, you've got the other one, which is the the look how tight the clearance is on the nut on the on the uh, motor mount. So all those things are you know you have to use short wrenches, um, crow's foots. Uh, wrenches all sorts of little tricks to get to get everything tight and and back in place so uh, it, it certainly fought me on this one and uh, it's no joke these these motor mounts on this this uh, this car is, is uh, not easy I've done motor mounts on a 330 GTC not nearly as, as hard as this uh, 365 and you know even though you know exactly how to do it it's uh, it, each car is different and you know, if you ever have to do a 365 GT2 Plus 2 motor mount, get ready for some uh, struggles. Now, admittedly, this car had some little struggles because of the studs and all that other stuff, but you never know until you get into it. But uh, moving ahead to do the uh, the right side, and um, hopefully it'll be a little bit easier than uh, than this side.